Discipline and consistency separate the good from the great. Welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we'll be discussing leadership, business, human potential, inspiring you to live rich from the inside out. Unlock your creativity, stretch out of your comfort zone, break through your barriers, take inspired action, and achieve epic results. Now here's your host, three-time best-selling author, speaker, and certified executive coach, Deborah Kozowski. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Millionaire Woman Show, where we interview the most phenomenal guests from around the globe, talking about lessons and principles of leadership, business, and life. And today, you're going to meet the PhD. Adam Shibley, aka the PhD, previously heavy dude, hit rock bottom moment in his life when he weighed 327 pounds. He then went on his own 100 pound weight loss journey. And as he was on this journey, he started to inspire people in his hometown to join him. He started a gym, a boot camp program, and helped his hometown lose over, holy man, 35,000 pounds in five years. Now he's the host of the top ranked health podcast, The Million Pound Mission, where his goal is to inspire 1 million pounds of healthy results, which he tracks on his website, millionpoundmission.com. Adam is known for helping females and a few men over the age of 30 that are super busy being employees, entrepreneurs, partners, friends, and moms. These are the people that tend to put themselves and their health last on the priority list. Adam teaches them how to escape the black hole of weight loss doom, which is where most people get trapped in the vicious cycle of losing weight and gaining it back over and over again. Adam impacts his community by teaching them his seven necessary steps for long-term weight loss success that has produced a total of 55,000 pounds of results for his clients and community members so far. Holy man, Adam, that's a huge accomplishment. Well, I think it was a huge accomplishment that you read that entire intro. You, you <laughs> nailed it. That, that, that's like running a marathon in, in podcast terms. No, I, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. I love uh, being able to share platforms like this as, as fellow podcasters and your show is awesome and your audience is the typical uh, audience that I really, really love to help out and I've, I've got, had a lot of success with. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to just jump in because I know losing a hundred pounds yourself, that was one of the biggest accomplishments ever as I have had a family member do that very same thing. And it's amazing to watch their journey and how focused they become. And um, I'm just wondering, what was that moment? I just want you to describe that moment that you've had that, okay, enough is enough. Well, that's a great question, Deborah. And for me, it was a little bit of a series of, of things where uh, I remember I was on a trip out to Colorado and I, could, like, I couldn't, because of the elevation, I'm from Indiana, you know, we're low elevation and, and I go to Colorado, it's, it's you know, the, the mile high city out there and I couldn't walk upstairs without just being winded. And I was like, ah, oh, this is terrible. And so that was when I started to notice like my health wasn't where it should have been. I started having blood pressure issues and things like that. Um, but then the actual moment where everything changed for me was I was in a grocery store, which is still about a mile from where I'm sitting right now. And I remember I'm in the, in, in the checkout line. I've got $40,000 of credit card debt racked up, like personal debt. I'm not talking like loans or like mortgages. I'm talking about like stupid stuff that I was spending money on as a 20 something year old guy. Uh, and I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pay for this food. I was 327 pounds. I wasn't happy with my career path. I was just kind of circling the drain of life. Like ugh, nothing's really going good right now. Yeah. And I went, I went home that night and there was a DVD sitting on top of my DVD player that a friend had loaned to me for the second time. I pretended to watch it once. They found out I actually didn't watch it. They, they gave it to me again. And it was called The Secret, The Law of Attraction. Mm -hmm. And I sat down that night, I watched it and things started to change from there. Just the seed was planted. Yeah. And 
that was my first dose of uh, personal growth material ever. I, I joke that the only thing I ever, the only book I ever read was the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition when that came out. <laughs> and that was about it. Uh, but th- it was just like my soul was lit on fire, Deborah. Like I, I felt helpless and hopeless. And that empowered me to say, I can control my destiny. I have to be willing to put, you know, what I say, you have to put action behind the law of attraction. You can't just sit and hope and think. You have to act in line with what you're, you're hoping and thinking about. And over that, you know, you said it, that that next five years, I went on a journey. I lost 100 pounds. I helped my hometown lose 35,000 pounds. I erased all my debt, fell in love, got married, started a family, started a business, started this whole career path that I'm on. And everything changed because I changed the way that I approached each day and the way I viewed the opportunities that were out there. And I basically woke up and I said, I had to I have to do something every single day. I can't not take a baby step every single day in line with one of these goals that I've set for myself. Mm-hmm. And I, if there's, you know, one superpower that I have, it's implementation. I act on stuff and I've always been a part, you know, somebody that does that. And, uh, you know, I, I implemented for five years straight and some pretty amazing things happened. So Adam, what you've confirmed for me and our audience here is that your life can change by one decision to show up differently. Yeah. I know the secret has been often criticized for being a lot of positive thinking and no action behind it. But what you've taken and you've really put the action behind the law of attraction and not just the positive thinking, but you've put it into motion. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, in case your, your listeners want to know some specifics, I'll give them to you, you know, briefly. And if you want to dive deeper, we can. Absolutely. Let's go there. But, okay. So I watched the, the, the movie and I'm just fired up by it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I never even thought about this positive thinking. And I realized that I was like a magnet for bad things. Uh, like, I was just, like, I realized that I was thinking about debt. I was thinking about stress. I was focusing on those things. So making that shift, I compare it to, you know, standing in a, in a dark hallway. I can't tell if there's a door open in front of me or not. I don't know what opportunities exist, but the law of attraction allowed me to shift my focus. It was like turning on the light switch so I could at least see opportunities in front of me. If a door is open, I could choose to walk through it or not. I could choose to take action. So that was the first huge shift for me. It was just the light, the light switch got turned on finally. Mm-hmm. And then I sat down that night and I mapped out what I wanted to create in my life over the next five years. And I don't, to this day, I don't know why I chose five years. It made sense mm-hmm. for some reason. Like I didn't want to do like a month because like I need some more time to overhaul things here yeah. for sure. Uh, so five years sounded good and ended up working out fairly perfectly. So this was July of 2007 through July of 2012 was the, my five year time span. So we're talking over a decade ago now. Um, so I sat down, I mapped out what I wanted to achieve in that five years I wrote it as if it had already happened, you know, positive affirmations, only positivity. So I, I didn't write things. I, didn't, I wouldn't even allow myself to put the word debt in there. Although I wanted to erase all that debt, I didn't want to be repeating debt, debt, debt multiple times per day. I didn't like that. And people are different about that, but that was just me. So I focused on abundance, uh, you know, being able to purchase things, financial freedom, th- those types of words. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I wrote it out as if it already happened, put a date, July 12th, 2012 was my goal deadline. And I made a promise to myself and I said, all right, I'm going to read this every morning and every night until everything happens or I cross this deadline and that can switch things up. Mm-hmm. And I did that. Like I said, I'm an implementation beast. So every morning. I read it out loud. I felt it. I tried to put myself in that position and say, okay, I weigh 227 pounds. What does that feel like? And I would put myself in that position and feel the health and just get, it would fire me up for the day. You know, there's no better way to get ready for a workout that most people, nobody ever really wants to wake up at five in the morning and work out, Deborah. We all know this, but putting myself in that position and feeling it, you know, in advance, kind of paying it forward, if you want to put it in those terms. That got me fired up to start taking action. So every morning, felt it, read it. It opened up my eyeballs, right? I could see opportunities in front of me throughout the day. The end of the day, I would read it again. And that was accountability time where I said, if, you know, I have to do something every day to move the needle, even the smallest little blip on that radar forward, you know, whether it's, you know, drinking a gallon of water or whether it was, 
uh, you know, doing a workout or making a, a business connection or sending an email or reading a blog you know, just more personal development stuff. I had to do something every single day and I wouldn't allow myself to go to sleep until I did that. And I didn't put the pressure on myself to solve everything in one day because I didn't create this mess in one day uh, and, you know, lose a hundred pounds in one day or lose a hundred pounds in six months or a year. You know, I had five years, you know, it took me five years to lose a hundred pounds. And a lot of people are like, well, I want to lose a hundred pounds in six months. And I've helped people do that. But the key is you lose it, you keep it off. And and you become this new person. It's not how fast you get there. It's that you do cross that finish line. And five years later, you know, I never missed a morning or an evening of that routine and that ritual. I showed up for myself because I knew it was going to be one of the hardest journeys I ever took. But I also knew that these goals in my life and myself, you know, I'm worth it. So I, I was willing to show up for myself for five years. And, you know, it just shows you what's possible if you do show up like that and, you know, bring that level of focus and implementation for that time period, some pretty cool stuff can happen. So one of the things that resonates with me is that there's freedom in repetition. People get so caught up in this, well, that's so st structured. I don't know if I could handle structure. And that repetition, it, it doesn't it get boring. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, there's a, one of my favorite authors and podcasters his name is Jocko Willink what a great name that's it that's you know Jocko and he looks like a Jocko like that's like you know don't mess it, with me Jocko exactly like you know <laughs> I know like, exactly you know, what you're talking about 430 yeah, on the watch exactly seal team you know six deal the whole the whole thing uh, but he says discipline equals freedom and to me that's what this is all about like just creating some processes because decision fatigue at least for me is a real thing so if I have to go through each day and make all these micro decisions, you know, even with just weight loss, like, okay, okay what am I going to eat today? And how am I going to prep that? And where am I going to find it? And when am I going to eat it? Yeah. I would rather create processes that are automatic that set me up to, to not have to deal with all those mini decisions. So with me, my affirmations, those are just the constant reminders of the direction that I need to be stepping towards every day. So I didn't have to figure it out every single day. Is like, here's, you know, do we, do we do this or not? I created a, a nice little binary situation of, did I make progress towards my goals? Any of them at all? Or no, if the answer is no, then do something. And simple, right? And that creates freedom for me and excitement because I started seeing progress. And, but again, on the same page, I, I didn't create that huge pressure that so many of us create mm -hmm. to, you know, and, you know, like I guess I don't work with a whole lot of men, but the ones that I do work with are especially guilty of this. We love numbers and we'll go, I'm turning 40 in 40 days and I want to lose 40 pounds for my 40th birthday. And, and like, it's like these numbers make no sense. How about we just try, try to get healthier every single day? Eventually we'll lose 30, 40 pounds and we'll feel great. It doesn't have to be in 40 days. It doesn't have to be like your 40th birthday. Um, but it's just about showing up and that repetition. But within that, it creates freedom for all these new things. Like when I lost hundred pounds, I'm like, I can do so much stuff. This is amazing. And uh, that was very, very exciting for me. And it kept on driving me. And there's that consistency piece that because you're consistent every day versus random action, that you start to see the results because often people are like, oh, well, I'll eat well today. Oh, I'm going to cheat today. And oh, I'm going to eat well. And it's so random, the acts that they're doing, that that's why they're not seeing a lot of the results. Yeah, a thousand percent correct. And there's a great diagram. I think it's in the book, The One Thing. I always get confused whether it's in Essentialism or The One Thing, both great books. But there's, uh, there are two circles next to each other. And one of the circles has lots of little tiny arrows. It looks like a sun almost, all the way around it, little tiny arrows. The other one, the other circle next to it has one long line, one big arrow. And that's the way I envision if I set a goal, I'm driving towards that goal consistently with, with all my focus instead of little tiny steps and always changing and always kind of dripping effort. And especially with, with weight loss and with health, you hit the nail on the head where people are very, very inconsistent and they, they program hop. And I even did a podcast episode about fitness podcast overwhelm where people will listen to four or five different fitness experts and they will change what they're doing throughout the week based off of what every expert is saying. So they're like, yo, Weight Watchers on Monday. And then 
keto on Tuesday and intermittent fasting Friday, cheat day, Saturday, Sunday, and the rest of the days I feel like it. Um, and you know, I, I'm really big on, I don't believe in any, like any one plan being the perfect plan. I believe in the right tool for the right job for the right situation. Mm -hmm. So I have clients that use Weight Watchers. I have clients that do keto. I have clients that do intermittent fasting. I have clients that do yoga. I have clients that do jazzercise. I have clients that strength train, but it's the right tool for the right job. Let's focus on that versus trying to find this magical unicorn program that I can use forever. And that's what everybody is like, I, I got to make that thing that's the lifestyle that I can use forever. And I'm like, how about just for right now? Like what's going to get us going in the right direction? And then we can modify and tweak things, make micro modifications as we go to really make it fit that long-term picture. But we don't need to find that right now. And that's a huge confusion point. Yeah. And I can see where people get caught up because then is a question, and this is one I would love for you to dive into is, is it willpower or want power? Well, I think it's both. And so let's address each one. Sure. And I already, I already talked about decision fatigue and for people that kind of just fly around without a real set plan, uh, you know, a game plan in place, they, their willpower gets depleted by all these micro decisions. A good example is I coach a lot of people in the medical community and we know what those break rooms look like in the back. You know, the drug reps are coming in and it's pizza and it's donuts and you know, sometimes it's even wine. I'm like, I don't want that. You know, if somebody's operating on me, I don't want to have wine in the break room, um, but it's there. And the interesting thing is I touch base with these people throughout the week and they are good all throughout the week. And then when they get home, uh, you know, with themselves on the weekend, it's cheat fit, cheat fest. And the reason is, you know, willpower is completely depleted. They can't resist any temptations. You know, it's right. throughout the week. It's just been deplete, deplete, deplete. They, they step up to that challenge. They overcome it, but it brings that reserve down, you know, and you go through the week, you're a little bit more tired. You know, maybe they're not sleeping well, that depletes everything. Stress depletes weekend you just you have nothing left to fight any temptation off and you're sitting there by yourself sometimes it's like yeah pizza sounds really darn good right now yeah. let's do it um so that's a part of it want power i would describe it more as as the why the why power mm -hmm. and i tell people like like with me i was on a health journey that it wasn't like i want to look good in a bathing suit it was like i'm going to you know, if I don't do something about this, I'm going to miss decades of my life. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard realization for some people to come to. But I'm glad I did that in my mid 20s and not in my mid 40s, you know. And I say that, you know, you better find your why before your why finds you because you may not survive that. And mm -hmm. I had an individual that, that signed up at, at my gym to do a boot camp and we're um, you know, big on accountability, daily reporting. You got to send in that daily report or we kind of chased you down for it. Paid $500 for an eight week boot camp, uh, got through day three and said he just didn't have time to send in reports. Like, uh, you know, paid in full, didn't show up to any classes and didn't want to send reports because I need something that's a little less, less intense. And it wasn't intense physically, it was just intense implementation wise. And I, I'm, you know, this is something that I hate saying, but six weeks later, he had a heart attack and died. Wow. And I would have, I'm not saying that I would have saved this guy's life, but I would have loved to had an opportunity to help him change the habits that could have helped prevent that, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not just about us either, Deborah. We got to think about the people that need us to be around. That guy had a wife, he had kids, you know, it's a sad story, but just assuming we're going to be okay. And that guy's why came calling and he wasn't ready for it. So you have to find your why before your why finds you. And you have to make sure that your why is bigger than the combined force of all the why nots because all the why nots will show up. It's the holiday season. It's spring mm -hmm. breaks coming up. I'm busy. You know, my kids are busy. You know, I'm, I'm sick. You know, I don't have money. I don't have time. And all these why nots will show up. But what's the why that's big enough to get you up out of bed at five in the morning to go to boot camp class or to send an email to your coach for accountability? And that is, is what we have to think about. So it's about the why power and the willpower. We combine those things and we're off to a pretty, pretty darn good start. See, and I think what you described, and I think people, 
they want accountability yet they don't want to be accountable yeah. <laughs> right they know yeah. they need the accountability but they really choose that you know i don't i don't want to be doing this i don't want to be checking in with someone i'm going to be showing that there's days that i won't do it yeah right yeah well i think sometimes people mistake accountability for judgment and they think that a coach will judge them and some coaches do get judgy and you know it's I'm not saying that all, all coaches are good and clients are bad. Like it goes both directions. Some coaches are that like drill sergeant type person that might be a little demeaning to a, somebody and might make them feel bad or, you know, but anything that I'm doing, I tell my clients, I'm, I'm like, I'm like your dog. Like my tail will wag every time I see you, good, bad, or ugly, I will be happy to see you. Uh, so my form of accountability is about support. It's about friendship. It's about being on the same team, trying to achieve a goal together. So we, we don't run from that. We run towards it. And one of my big teaching topics, uh, as far as, I mean, really with any sort of goal setting, uh, I call it, a, you know, building accountability anchor points. So you look at all the different areas of your life where you spend the most time. Mm -hmm. So for people that's home, business, friend circles, maybe social groups, church things, you know, friend groups. And you try to establish a positive accountability anchor point in as many of those areas as possible. Like you just strive for, it's like climbing a mountain. You don't want to be anchored on in with just one anchor because if that breaks, then you're all the way back to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And there are a ton of people out there that have like a personal trainer. That's their one accountability anchor point. The personal trainer kicks them to the curb or increases rates. They can't afford it or moves. And then they fall all the way down because they don't have anything else to support them. So like looking at groups at work, maybe you can do like a walking Wednesday lunch and you, everybody knows that, that that happens. You organize it. You're expecting people to be there. You're expected to be there. Or with your friend circle, instead of going out for wine and nachos every Tuesday and Thursday, maybe you just do that on Thursday, but on Tuesdays, you guys go out for a bike ride or something like that. Like but that. look for these opportunities for a positive accountability anchor points in all the different areas of your life. And you might be responsible for creating that. You can't always hope that somebody else already has it there for you, but that is a really great way to run towards accountability. And that can be, you know, if you have a financial goal, if you have a early retirement goal or a savings goal or a business goal, look for those accountability anchor points and really latch on and look for that support, look for coaches, look for teammates and don't run away from that. I think that's a huge mistake. Thank you for that, because I think those anchor points are such, they build that security knowing, and I think that's what people are looking for as well, is knowing that there's this safe environment, we take out the judgment, and that those anchor points are just parts that just say, okay, I'm just keeping you on your track, right? We're keeping you on track. Yep. So let's dive into a little bit of your journey, and what is the black hole of weight loss doom, and how do we <laughs> escape it? So this is my platform, Deborah. This is what I'm most excited about. I see so many people struggle with this and it's to the point where people just think that this is just how it is. Like this is what the weight loss journey looks like. So I want everybody listening to envision a circle of interconnected arrows going around the circle. So the top arrow is what I label as we start something new. We do a new program. It's maybe January 1st. Maybe you're getting ready for spring break and you decide I'm going to start intermittent fasting. Cool. So we start intermittent fasting. That's, we start something new. The second arrow bending around to the right side of the circle is we get some results. We get initial results because it's a new stimulus. And anytime we stimulate our body in a different way that it hasn't been stimulated before, it's gonna produce some positive results usually. Uh, so we get excited about that. Now the bottom part of the circle is where things get interesting. This is what I label as life happens and we're not ready for it. So we go on spring break and uh oh wasn't ready for that or work our work schedule changes our relationship changes uh, we lose a workout partner we lose an accountability anchor point that was our only one you know stress happens and here, here's a, a think fast quiz for you here deborah the word stressed if you spell it backwards what does it spell desserts desserts that's what happens <laughs> Desserts happen when we're stressed. Yes. So life happens, desserts happen. Yes. And the fourth part, the fourth arrow of the circle coming back up to the top 
is crash and burn. We go back to where we started. And I see, you know, I'm sure everybody has either been through this or definitely know somebody that's, they do the thing, they get, they lose 30 pounds, a thing happens, they gain 30 pounds. And this just around and around and around. And you talk about willpower, this will deplete the heck out of your willpower. You lose that resource, time, money, energy, hope. You start to think like, oh, maybe I'm just not meant to be fit. Maybe this is just who I am. We start to give up on ourselves. And the real mistake here, Deborah, and what I really hammer home with people is the variable shift. And the variable shift doesn't need to happen at the top of the circle. It needs to happen at the bottom of the circle. People go, oh, intermittent fasting didn't work. And that's not the case. What didn't work is we weren't ready for that bottom stressor that happened. Mm -hmm. And if I can get people prepared for that, we can crush it with any nutrition protocol, with any fitness protocol, mm -hmm. And get that initial surge of positive momentum. And then, like I said, we can fine tune and tweak things from there. But people, they just do different program after different program, write them off. That didn't work. That didn't work. But every time they don't realize they slip up because they go on vacation, they gain five pounds. And that's not that big of a deal. But what is a big deal, they don't get back into their healthy routine for three months after a vacation. That's the transformation danger zone. So the way we solve this I just gave you the first step. We identify the issue, that transformation danger zone, that hole in the road that we just keep on driving our car right into every time. And we hope for a different result every time. Let's build a bridge over that. So we identify the issue. We analyze it and we say, okay, every time I go on spring break, uh, this tends to happen. So I know that, you know, I'm going to gain some weight. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to stress over that. But the real issue is I don't reestablish healthy habits after the vacation. So we analyze it a little bit, and then we come up with a plan of action ahead of time. And with the vacation situation, I advise people, I'm like, all right, let's make sure you have everything in place before you leave. So your personal training sessions, your, your boot camp classes, your coaching sessions, whatever, those are booked in advance. Those are scheduled, paid for in advance, hopefully. Uh, you know what meal plan you're going to use. You know when you're going to meal prep. You, you already know when you're going to be grocery shopping or if you're on like a a click list thing, you can pre-schedule that and the groceries are ready for you to, for pickup or delivery. Like we do all of that thinking in advance so that when we get back, we just walk right into a plan. And that's how you solve a transformation danger zone. You identify, analyze, and plan ahead for it to give you a better chance. You may not crush it, but we sure can set ourselves up for a better result. And if we, like I said, if we can do that, we'll get much better results. And Really, the, 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 the thinking challenge I want to put out there for your audience is if you are one of those people that's been in this black hole of weight loss doom, just cycling through it back and forth, don't necessarily think about what programs you've been doing. Like, think about where the slip up happened. Was it, you know, what, what, what stressor was that? Is it maybe nighttime snacking or you don't have dinner ready and you tend to go through the drive through or a relationship changes and you go off the radar? Like, what is that thing? And let's start working on solving that. And that will really create some, some nice progress for us. So what were some of the stressors that you had going on that you started to identify that you had to work on? With me, nighttime eating was huge. You know, I was just, you know, I was on the seafood diet. I saw food and I ate it. And yeah. that, was, that was the deal. And, you know, with, you know, stress, not, you know, I would just work a million hours and then at the end of the day, willpower is low. I'm like, eh, let's, let's drive through this, this beast. I, I was well known at Taco Bell. I would do the, the 10 for 10. And, you know, they figured out pretty quickly that I wasn't going to a party. I was going to eat all those myself. And that was like the, the dinner that I would eat a lot, of, you know, more often than not. Mm -hmm. And it was just, for me, that, that nighttime was the real danger zone. So I knew for me, meal prep became key. And like my crock pot is my best friend. It still is. You know, simple things for busy people. The crock pot is amazing. And now they have the Instapot, but I'm still old school. So I would, uh, you know, sit the crock pot when I would leave for work. And that way I had a delicious dinner ready to go. And it was warm. And all I had to do was eat. I, I created that binary decision of mm -hmm. I can eat the healthy thing or I can do the unhealthy thing where people get in trouble with meal prep is that they, the, the eat the unhealthy thing is a one step decision. If they don't have food ready to go, that, that, that it creates multiple decisions down that chain where it's like, okay, I want to eat the healthy thing, but what healthy thing am I going to eat? 
Where am I going to find it? You know, do I got to go grocery shopping? How long is it going to take? Screw it. Talk about. And that's, that's usually what happens. Right. They want to take the path of least resistance. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's the path of least resistance. A lot of times will lead to the path of the least results. That's, right. you know, that that's, you know, you got to sharpen that sword a little bit and, and be able to go to work. Yeah. And one of the things that I think when we're thinking about that journey and mm-hmm. I've heard it throughout our conversation is you're always it's a choice from moment to moment. What am I going to choose? Am I going to choose the path of least resistance? I'm going to choose the path because I have the least willpower right now, but yet I can make a choice to know what it feels like and go back to that affirming place. What will it be like when I weigh this much? Yeah. Yeah. And really you got to think if you're going to break it down to choices and decisions, you just have to win in that moment of decision more often than you don't. You're not going to win them all. Like I still like, I get a little hangry and it's time for some cookies every once in a while, you know, but more often than not, I'm sticking to my protocol and that's the name of the game. It's, you know, some people can completely abstain. I'm not that person and I don't expect anybody to be that person, but 80% will get the job done. That's a solid B minus that got me through college. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they look at the certificate and not the the numbers that came with it. Right. Exactly. Perspective as well. What is the first step that you take when you start working with a client? We honestly, we start analyzing those danger zones. Like we, we got to, we have to figure out where that hole in the road is that they keep walking right into because I just want them to be better prepared the next time that happens because it it tends to happen, you know, regularly or in, in, in cycles. So we start there and then we start getting organized with habits and processes where I just label it as strategic thinking. And, you know, well, I know you have tons and tons of entrepreneurs listening to your show. So think about it this way, entrepreneurs, you wouldn't not, you wouldn't avoid scanning the, the distance, you know, 30, 60, 90 days in advance and go and asking yourself the question, what could put me out of business, right? That would not be smart. So why don't we do that with our, our bodies and our health? What could put us out of business? What could derail our transformation? What could really mess up our health? So I work in in 28 day cycles with people. I've got a workbook that I call the transformation battle plan workbook, and we'll hook everybody up for free in your audience. And it's, it helps people look 28 days in advance and we go, okay, what danger zones are out there lurking that I need to be ready for. We identify them, we analyze them, we plan ahead for them. Mm -hmm. Then I make people commit for 28 days to one nutrition protocol. Like we're not going to skip around. We're going to do something. We're going to commit to something. We're going to put a ring on the finger and get committed. I'm not going to date around with Weight Watchers and then cheat on it with, with keto. All right. <laughs> I love that. So we got to get committed and we're going to execute to the best of our ability and see what happens. Same thing with fitness. Right. All right? Like I, I don't like it when people are just, well, if I wake up in the morning, I might go to yoga class. Like that never happens. Like we, no one ever wakes up in the morning that wants to go work out at five in the morning. Like that just, it doesn't happen. So you got to get committed. You know, when are you working out? Where are you working out? Are you booked in advance? Is it in your calendar? Don't just fly by the seat of your pants on on your workouts either. Mm -hmm. And then we start mapping things out. I've got a tool that I teach people that I call the cheat bank, which is the most fun topic to talk about because that's when we actually set up like a bank account type situation for when they're going to go off of their plan and they have cheat meals. And we try to figure out, like I, I have a genuine goal to help people figure out what they can get away with to where they feel like they're living a real life, not giving up too many social points and can also be healthy. And this is, it takes some time to figure out, but it's totally cool when I say, okay, let's do five cheat meals, this 28 day cycle. Let's map them out in advance. So we're not going to beat ourselves up about it. And, and, you know, feel like, Oh, I'm off the wagon. You know, we, we own it and I go, okay, that's my birthday. I'm going to take a cheat meal. Uh, That's my kid's birthday. Cheat meal, date night, cheat meal. And you own it. It's part of the plan. And Mm -hmm. so there's no on plan or off plan. We have a plan and that's what matters. And we execute upon that, that plan to the best of our ability. And then at the end of the 28 day cycle, we review and go, okay, what went well? What didn't go well? What little minor tweaks do we need to make? One of the, the main benefits of, of using me as a coach is 
people want to change a whole bunch of stuff all at once because they get all fired up about it. And I'm like, no, we're going to just change one little thing because I want to know what works and what doesn't work. If we change five things and you get a good result, we don't know what one of the five things actually exactly. worked. Yeah. It's like if you're out there running Facebook ads, you change one thing. You know, you change the image from ad to ad. You don't change the image and the text and the title all at once because then if it works, you're like, well, I don't know. We got to gotta keep guessing here. Uh, so that's, that's the way I approach the transformation game as well. And we go in 28 day cycles and we just are patient and that's, you know, the pressure is off. It's not lose all the weight in one day. It's just take a step forward every day. And that's the focus and that's what gets the job done. So in what way did you use that toward the debt? I know you use the affirmation of you focusing on abundance and financial freedom, but how can people leverage doing some of these things to other areas in their life that they know that they need to change. Yeah. Well, like I never, I didn't know who Dave Ramsey was or any of these, these people, but I kind of do, do, I did his debt uh, snowball type yeah. situation, but I did more of the avalanche, which the snowball, there's like a top down, bottom up. I don't know. But what I did was I chose, I had a bunch of credit cards, like, I put a post up on my Instagram. There was like 25 credit cards that I had kept them all uh, just as a reminder. And I chose the one with the highest interest rate first. And I just paid that off. I did minimum payments and everything else. And then I took that. Um, so let's say I was paying $200 a month on that one. Then I took that and added to the next one with the highest interest rate. And then whatever that payment combo was, next one and event, you know, I paid it off pretty quickly. But what I did next, I call this my debt slingshot. And so I, by the end of it, I had like 1500 bucks a month that I had gotten used to paying towards all these credit cards. So I took that and I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay off my mortgage now. So I put all, I was already used to paying it and my lifestyle had adjusted around it. Mm -hmm. so I paid off my mortgage in my thirties, which was awesome. And so I've been mortgage free for a few years now. And then I was still used to paying that 1500 plus a month. I said, okay, I'm going to stack this all towards early retirement and financial independence. And that's another thing I'm super passionate about. So I'm on track to be financially independent by my, by age 45, which means my assets, I can live off assets and not have to work if I don't choose to. So really it's all about that habit and the debt reduction. That's why I call it the slingshot. It created a habit of taking all that money towards buying my freedom, whether it was paying off all the debt, paying off my mortgage, early retirement. It would create this whole synergistic slingshot effect that's impacted my whole life in a hugely positive way. So it's uh, something, I don't, you know, nobody likes being in debt, but it can create a, a pot, something positive out of it. Somehow I think that's a great book title, you know. The debt, the debt slingshot. slingshot. I think you need to go grab that now. <laughs> Debtslingshot.com. Exactly. All right. So what are the keys to seeing the long-term weight loss success? So with, with weight, I already hit on a couple of the points. Mm -hmm. All right. So we talked about um, being committed to your food, right? Being committed to your fitness. 28 days at least. Don't change anything. Strategic thinking super important, right? Like you, you have to be able to think in advance, just like we do with our business. But then we get into some things like accountability, right? We already touched on that. Like we have to be willing to look for and accept accountability. You look at things like community. So many people, Deborah, they get into the transformation game and they've lost weight and gained it so many times. The thought that goes through their head is, you know, I've lost 30 pounds 10 different times. I should be able to do this on my own by now. And that is when they're like, I need to be self-accountable. And that's like the worst possible thing that you could say to yourself because you need to be accountable to somebody else before you can even learn to be accountable to yourself. So finding that tribe of people, finding that community of people, whether it's coaches or a cool Facebook group that you can just kind of vibe with and do some challenges with people at work, you know, friend circles, whatever, you get that community going and you, you do it together. And yeah. that's why, you know, I'm a community builder through my, my million pound mission podcast. And I like to facilitate that and grow that and give people a community to dive into and be like, dang, I'm a part of something. That's why we, we are tracking the results. People can go on, they, they donate their weight loss. So if one of you guys listens to 
one of my episodes and you implement something and you lose seven pounds, you can go on the website, donate the seven pounds. I don't ask for your email. I don't ask for anything. It just, you see it, the ticker goes, boop, 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 seven pounds. Awesome. Thank you for your donation. And people have told me this, like, I feel like I'm a part of this now. I'm a part of this community. I call it the Mission Possible Crew, uh, where you know, I, I did a, uh, a, a live event and I wrote the word impossible in all capital letters across the board. And I said, here, if I only do one thing you know, through this event or for you guys you know, listening to this podcast, I want to draw a line. Uh, so it, it creates two words and it says, I'm possible. And if I can help people get that belief back, that mm-hmm. I can actually do this. Cause that's what I felt when I watched the secret, I finally felt like I'm possible. Like this is, I can take control of, over my life again. And that's just, you know, that's the, the keys to the, the kingdom right there. Just that belief you can spark hope in somebody mm-hmm. and make them feel like they can actually accomplish it. Then from there, it's all about just implementation. And look at the ripple effect. Like you made this journey for yourself, but look at your own hometown, your community that you've built on Facebook as well. And just your podcast alone, how many people it reaches that when one person makes a decision, the world adjusts around, around that. And if you make it perfectly clear what you're focused on, like you said, that circle with that arrow, very focused on the direction you're going people will start to notice. You think that they don't, but they do. And then they start thinking about their own lives and, oh, yep. maybe there's something, one thing I can change. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all about momentum and energy. And that's, you know, something that I, again, pride myself in. When somebody new comes to my community, I tell them like, listen, I know this seems like the biggest mountain ever that you're about to climb. The good news is you can borrow my energy until you build up your own. You can borrow this mojo and this, insane yeah. you know <laughs> energy that i'm bringing you can yeah. borrow some of that and make it your own until you build up your own and that's what the community is all about and that's it's just we you know we uh level everybody up together and that's there's nothing better like me losing 100 pounds is cool helping you know 15 people in my hometown lose 100 pounds way cooler getting you know people email me from england and sweden and everywhere else they're like i listened to your show and now i've lost 70 pounds i'm like mind blown this is crazy i'm in my my, my basement of my house just yelling into microphone and this <laughs> neat stuff's happening i feel really uh, really lucky to be able to do that that's phenomenal so we've almost come to the end of this interview and i love to ask you to have two more questions and then i want you to share as much as you can with how people can stay, uh, stay in touch with you yeah but my question is for you is what is one of the books that you have read or listened to by audio that has had the most significant other than the secret because we we've got that one that has really made you rethink the way you do things in life Uh, i mentioned earlier the one thing you know gary keller jay papasan uh just amazing because we i'm an entrepreneur at heart and i have a little hummingbird going in my brain region and it's an idea a minute and my friends make fun of me because I, I like to name things and I come up with creative w- terms and, and things like that. And it's just a, an idea, a minute. So the one thing got me focused on like what, if I was able to achieve one thing in my life that had the biggest yeah. ripple effect on everything else, what would that be? And for me, that was financial independence. I've got it written down FI by 45. And that's, you know, that is the driver of how I, that's the filter I use when I make my decisions with my business, with the way right. I schedule my life with the projects that I take on, that is, is the filter. And that's the one thing for me. So that's the book that I would recommend. Awesome. And what does it mean to you to live rich from the inside out? Great question. Uh, To me, richness is is, is an interesting term because I live a minimalist lifestyle. Like I said, I, I have goals of like early retirement, not necessarily, you know, making as much money as possible. I'm big on using a filter of enough versus more and using that to make decisions in my life. So for me, richness means I'm really embracing my unique ability. and I'm able to go out there and use that and make an impact on people. I love to learn things in areas that I'm passionate about. I love to transfer that knowledge to other people and help them shorten their learning curve in those areas. And if I can do that, I feel fulfilled to the, just the max. So that's, that's richness to me. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam, for sharing so much in such rich conversation. We could be talking for hours. <laughs> and uh, I would love for people to know how they can stay in touch with you, how they can become part of your community and really compound your mission. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, millionpoundmission.com. That's a great hub of all things Million Pound Mission. Um, if, right at the top of the page, I mentioned earlier, you can snag a copy of the Transformation Battle Plan Workbook. I've got a free uh, course you guys can do, The Seven Necessary Steps for Long-Term Weight Loss Success. I'll walk you through how to fill out the workbook. It's all there. It's free. You can donate your weight there, all that stuff. Uh, the podcast, Million Pound Mission, wherever you listen to podcasts. And then uh, Instagram. I am very, very active on Instagram. Instagram is indeed my jam. And Million Pound Mission on Instagram. Send me a direct message. I will send you a voice message back to welcome you. Like, Deborah, I started doing something new and I love it. Anytime someone follows my account, I don't care if they comment, like, post, anything. Yeah. They follow my account. I send them a personalized audio message so they know that it's from me. I cool. use their name. Now, if they have a private account, I can't do that because I can't, you know, For I sure. can't access it. I can't, you can't send them a message. But uh, otherwise, you're going to get a message from me saying, hey, thanks for following my account. I appreciate that. If you ever have any questions, just hit me up. Send me a DM. So I love to interact. I love to connect with people. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at on Instagram most of the time. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm so grateful to have met you at the New Media Summit with Steve Ulsher, September of 2019. And I know we're going to be uh, launching this in the new year. And I, I'm already thinking of how I'm adjusting the schedule to hit the greatest impact for those of you who are looking at any point of transition. And uh, thank you again. And thank you for coming our listeners who come and listen to our phenomenal guests, one of the biggest things that we'd love for you to do is go over to iTunes, give us a rating review, five-star high five. But most of all, share with us some of the episodes like Adam's that where you got your greatest takeaway, that aha moment. You can message Adam directly or send me an email or DM me. I really want to hear what was that one thing that really changed your perspective because it comes down to a choice all the time. And I'd also love for you to go over to my website at www.debrakazowski.com where you will get your three, it's a mini course with three videos to really help you make your habits stick as you move in your life and make those changes that have focus consistency to really get things done. And don't forget to go over to Adam's community where you can start making those changes in your life today. As Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And on behalf of Adam and myself, go out and make today great.